Over the past five weeks, the ICANN Technical Theater Internship Program has trained in various areas of theatrical production. This is their production challenge showcasing the various talents, areas, and businesses of Ward 7 and 8. Each production team was tasked with highlighting a program of building bridges across the river, interviewing a Ward 7 or 8 Black-owned business in Ward 7 or 8 and including it in their visual podcast, and creating an original song with original music. Stay tuned to see what interns have created. Spotlight I am the Productions. Of Equity with the 11th Street Bridge Park, which is a project of building bridges across the river. Also a long time Ward 8 resident, um, homeowner here, my family's here. Um, it, it, I'm here because I wanna have a greater impact in my community. Um, and I want that impact to be long lasting for my children and hopefully my children's children. And so this gives me an opportunity to come to work every day and do something I love, um, but also that's gonna have an amazing impact on my community. My plan was a manifestation of a, no a number of town hall sessions that included the community to make sure that the resources um, and the leverage that we could get from the park. You can't have really, uh, you can't have a real conversation about equity without talking about a redistribution of power. Kids my age, I'm 
Well, people, as far as real estate, people see it as this, glam, as this glamorous job where you have a nice car and nice clothes and you got to show the house and you make a million dollars. But my advice is to just know it's a real job. Not when you see this glamorous type of life, but you know, you got to work, you got to hustle. The more you put into something, the more you get out. So that would be my advice for anyone that wants to come into real estate. Just know, you got to work. Production. Black lives matter and you know what that means Me. Put the guns down and get on the team T. Straight out of the DMV T. Most specifically Southeast Scriptures for the DMV, boy we talking DC Worst out the three, BMO got his own thing They think the city cool, tourists come to see the views Harbor White House, plenty things for them to do. Summer ain't safe, that's what people crave too. No one got for women, children, regardless, they gon' shoot. Black Lives Matter, and you know what that means. Put the guns down and get on the team. Straight out of the DMV, most specifically Southeast. But we stay in war eight, make it out to be great. In the city, too much hate, get out before it's too late. When I make it out the hood, they can call me Hollywood. Gotta be the best DB the city ever seen. Ball out on my team, they gon' see me in the big screen. Cause I got some big dreams. The DMV, most specifically Southeast. Third Eye Productions. What's the Skyline Workforce Center? The Skyline Workforce Center is a collaborative of nonprofits that provides employment services in DC, mostly to residents in Ward 7 and Ward 8. Skyline Workforce Center is a little bit of everything when you come to the community. We provide training and job search assistance and also case management assistance. The favorite thing to do at Skyline Workforce Center is overall be the face. Because you always need somebody that um, gravitate the right energy towards you when you discourage them. My most memorable piece of information I got here, patience is a virtue. And being as though I work with all different kind of people, I'm learning emotional intelligence every day by working with Anne-Marie Lashana Ramella. I'm able to teach other people what I learned from here and um, I learn every day too from the people who come to the center that a lot of times when people are upset, it's not about you, it's about something else that's going on in their lives. And that also when people are upset, just asking them to take a day, an hour, 10 minutes, just to take a breath and come back. The Youth Entrepreneur Institute, better known as YEI, is a multiverse of opportunity. It is the partner to a businessman or woman and the connection for someone with an idea. YEI helps the youth understand that nothing is impossible to accomplish at any age. It is a self-paced process with guidance. YEI gifts you with knowledge that money cannot buy. The Youth Entrepreneur Institute helps a child realize their worth, enabling them to reach beyond the sky. Hi everyone, my name is Bailey Wiley and I'm going to be answering three questions about how YEI has helped me and my small business in the past year. What is the biggest thing I've learned in YEI? And the biggest thing I have learned is how important saving and reinvesting into your business is like, it's mandatory to know cutting corners around it. One thing that I learned from the YEI program was to reuse my resources. Because once you use your resources that you pull and put your heart and money into, you wouldn't want to just throw them away. It's like wasting your money. Why would you want to throw your money away? 
What's your favorite part of the program? And my favorite part of the program had to be the bonds I created with everyone. I can't wait to see where everyone goes with their business later on in the future. And I can't wait to support them. Like, one thing I loved about YI was being able to meet new people, learn new things. Um, the, the leader that I had, she was amazing. And she, it was just a vibe in that, in that room. And it, it was an open space, a very welcoming space. It was a lot of vibes going on. So it was a lot of different personalities and different things that I learned while being there. It was a good experience. And I was able to get different ideas from different people and we was all able to work together. The third question is going to be, how did the program help my business trajectory? It made my path, my business path smoother. I wanted to get more product. I wanted to get more people. So it really helped that. Why did I help me through various connections? Like networking, they wanted to give me the opportunity to do pop-up shops and even having the knowledge to tell me um, and give me advice on how to run and manage my social media to, you know, kind of kind of get my content out more smooth really helped me. Why Y'all yeah, definitely is a program I would definitely do again and I loved it. Um, I overall really do love working with the YEI team and if they're saying this, I really love you. Um, and thank you. Thank you for listening. Honestly, I'm having second thoughts Is it really worth my time or is it just time lost? Can't get down with the person I've become Can I make a clean break or am I fond if I fall Don't even feel the same thing Two butterflies I realize it's no longer a game One side of you don't know that hurt You've always looked for handouts, you just couldn't see it's worth Oh, I can't have a yell. I'm scared of that word for sure. If only I would try some more. Why I can't have a yell? Come too far to lose it all. It's been a while since I was sure. Oh, why keep me when I say tie and cheat? I just need to be complete. It being easy in the path for me. Oh, oh, oh. So, see honestly I'm having second thoughts Is it really worth my time or is it just some loss? I really need this business to succeed Is it ever gonna grow past all this crazy fatigue? Free Minds Productions. Hi, my name is JJ, and I'm the Senior Farm Manager for the Ark Farm. Basically what we do here at the Ark Farm is provide fresh, affordable produce for the Ward 8 and Ward 7 communities. And basically how we do that is we distribute our food through our CSA and Farmer's Market program. The reason why we do this is because the Ward 8 community is considered a food desert or a food apartheid. And basically what that means is the the residents in this community aren't subject to a lot of um, access to fresh, affordable produce. And um, a big example of that is um, there's only one grocery store in Ward 8 serving 85 to 90,000 people. So with that being a problem here, um, the Art Farm came about to um, fight that disparity. Hello, we're here live, and this is Free Minds Productions, and this is our podcast. And today, we are here with K. 
Kimo Freeman, and he is the owner of We Act Radio. First question we're going to have is, what is the significance behind We Act Radio? I think the significance of We Act Radio is the fact that six corporations control most of what you see here and read. So if you change um, the station um, five times, you write back to the same owner. There's an African proverb that says, until the lions have their own historians, the tales of the hunt will continue to glorify the hunter. That basically means the survivors tell the story. The official police report, mm -hmm. right? The official police report used to stand for a long time. You know, in front of my studio, on the front door of the studio, is a quote from the uh, anti-lynch activist Ida B. Wells. And her quote is that um, those that commit the murders write the reports. So before, it used to be the official police report, but then these were created. And these smartphones start capturing a different story. And We Act Radio is that different story because we cannot continue to allow corporations and the government to tell us what reality is. We Act Radio is here to put some paint where it ain't and shed some light on the story. Like, have you ever repeated the words to a song you know you didn't like the first time you heard it? Yes. Why would you do that? Because eventually it grew on to me. How did it grow on you? What is it, a fungus? Kept listening to it and hearing it around on the radio. So you just confirmed the power that media has over not only our thoughts, but inevitably our actions if we continuously listen to it. So that all of that is the power and importance of We Act Real, something that's beyond the control to be... Um, um, at least unconcerned about our issues. And so my next question will be, what was your dream job and how did it lead into you becoming the co-founder of We Act Radio? I don't believe in the um, uh, dream, dream jobs. Uh, I believe in dream opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know, a job is something you do to make money. A career is a choice that you make on how you're going to live your life and you make your contribution contributions to society. Mm -hmm. So uh, my dream career mm -hmm. is uh, me doing what I'm doing now. Uh, and that is whatever I want, um, whatever I can do to um, expose the, the, the lies that we've been taught, do what we can to organize our people to recognize that we have the power and the capacity to influence where we go from here. Martin Luther King's last book was called Chaos or Community. Where do we go from here? And so my dream career is filling that space, filling those shoes, and being something as I, I, I like this, this wonderful organization in D.C. called Harriet Tubman's Wildest Dreams. You've seen those shirts that are my ancestors' wildest dreams. Yeah. You know, so my dream career is being my ancestors' wildest dreams. And then when I say my ancestors, I'm not talking about the ones that snitched <laughs> and uh, uh, turn because every slave um, revolt in America was thwarted by uh, um, a slave. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there wasn't a white person; it was a slave <laughs> that told <laughs> and got everybody hemmed up off the promise that they would give them their freedom if they told on everybody else. And that thing is still practiced right now. So my dream career is educating our people to understand and think for themselves and differentiate things that are uh, um, working against us and things that's working for us. So as a black business owner, what would you give to someone who is also black and trying to grow their business? Uh, I, you know, everyone in my skin folk ain't my kin folk. Right. So I think that um, um, true progressive businesses truly are committed to uplifting people, having some collective efforts so that we all can be out. So that was all on here today with Free Minds Productions podcast interview again here with Kimo Freeman. One more thing. We Act Radio, do something. Thank you all for listening. Stay tuned for more. Be
So tell me what we gonna do It seems like we like to see each other lose Cause he from the rival of your heart, there's no excuse I think I'll stick over beef that no concern you I don't know how I sleep tonight But I know I'll be alright In these streets, they don't play nice But you know wrong from right Here at the Town Hall Educational Arts Recreational Center, otherwise known as the ARC, we're a home to two theaters perfectly for fostering any kind of events you desire. Hey, how you doing? Kiro Parsi, production manager for the ARC Theater. Uh, day to day, what my job looks like, um, it starts with pre production, and that's just me working with clients, just fleshing out all the details of their show, everything that they need, um, and going over to run the show for the day. And also, uh, past that dorm production, I'm actually in there working with the clients, kind of moving the show, moving it on, uh, working with tech in front of house, and kind of making sure everything is in place for the show. With both a proscenium and black box, the Arcs Theater are perfect for making your magic come to life. Be a part of our magic today. Productions is touring Ward 8's very own Open Crumb, a Black-owned business nestled in Anacostia. I'm with Peter Opari, the co-founder of this restaurant, so can you tell us a little bit about the order? Um, my name is Peter Opari. I am the chef and co-owner of Open Crumb. We are a family-owned scratch kitchen. We primarily focus on West Southland food and soul food and ranch and cuisine. So can you tell us a little bit about your dishes and their relation to D.C., if there is any? Um, so my dishes are primarily focused on the West African cuisine or food pretty much from all over the black diaspora. Um, you pretty much are connected to D.C. in which D.C. Is a, has a large black population. Um, so our food is representative of our culture, of our history. So I, one thing I would love to do is take food from my own traditional West African background and reconnect it into the wider black diaspora history. Um, as we all know, the enslaved people brought over all their food and customs directly related to that food, so there is a direct line from West African food directly tied to uh, the history of the black American people. So have you faced any hurdles specifically related to the fact that this is a black-owned business or has it served you positively? Um, I would say that because we are a black-owned business, it has served me positively in a more positive light. Uh, the black community in D.C. is pretty strong and pretty supportive and a large black population who is always seeking out different black businesses so they can support and we have a connection to. Uh, I feel that the food which I serve is specifically tied to the black community, um, which does go out and seek foods. And because there's so few black businesses, especially restaurants in the city, I feel like that I do serve a specific niche in uh, serving the food which connects us to our history. As I'm sure you're aware, Ward 7 and 8 is are two areas that are very dense with black culture, but unfortunately there's a lot of negative stereotypes that would dissuade people from coming here in the first place. How would you say Open Crumb is resisting against these stereotypes? I think when you think about food across the river, a lot of people are more keen to think about uh, just carry out food, fried food, that's generally unhealthy, uh, food that's not produced by 
that it serves people of color, but it's not produced by people of color. Um, we really want to break that mold. That's why we um, go out of our way to make sure all the, we use lots of vegetables, everything we made in house. Um, everything is made fresh. Um, we try to limit the amount of fried food that we have. There's nothing wrong with fried food, but it doesn't take over our menu. Um, so we really wanted to draw a clientele and serve a clientele in this community that wanted something different from the every from the everyday carry out and quite unhealthy oily food that you see all around. Um, I think that stereotype about um, it being dangerous or it being um, uh, unwanting, like feel with the unwanted, is kind of something that it's going to take time for Anacostia to grow out of, but you are seeing that it break out of its mold. Um, a lot of the community is working quite diligently um, in uh, reshaping the image of the, this area across the river. Well, this has been the Mass Productions podcast. We're here at Open Crumb. Feel, feel free to check it out. I'm with Peter Opari. And do you want to say anything? Uh, just a pleasure to have you guys around. My restaurant is located um, in Anacostia between MLK and 13th Street. Um, we're always happy to help out our youth when we can. Thank you. Second place goes to Mass Productions. First place goes to Free Minds Productions. Great job, everyone.